Hello everyone, this is Bishwade Sharkar. I'm a student of Biotechnology and Genetic Engineering Department, Faculty of Biological Sciences, Jahangir University, Bangladesh. And my presentation topic is designing multi-epitope-based, uh, epitope-based multivalent and multi-pathogenic vaccines against dengue and Zika viruses utilizing the immunoinformatics approach. So, uh, as we all know that both dengue virus and Zika virus belong to the flavivirid family and both of them contain a single stranded positive sense RNA. Dengue virus has four, four main serotypes, namely uh, dengue V1, 2, 3, and 4, and they share about 65% similarity among their genomes. And Zika virus does not contain any serotype, but it has two lineages, and uh, those are the Asian lineage and the African lineage, and these two lineages share more than 95% amino acid sequence identity among themselves. So uh, the main motivation of our uh, study was to design a vaccine uh, which can target or which can be used to uh, prevent the infections of both dengue and Zika viruses simultaneously from those reasons where these two viruses uh, or uh, these two diseases, dengue fever and Zika fever, occurs at the same time. Here you can see that there are many reasons around the world where both the dengue and Zika virus overlap. So uh, our our design multivalent vaccines uh, might have the capability to fight uh, both these viruses at the same time uh, simultaneously. So here you can see the picture uh, of dengue vaccine, which is actually uh, a dengue vaccine developed by Sanofi Pasteur. And dengue vaccine is uh, quite effective against all the four major stereotypes of dengue virus, but it has some controversies which limit uh, its use in the current uh, in the current uh, present time. So this slide shows the flowchart which was used, uh, I mean shows the flowchart of the methods which, uh, which were used in our study. Here you can see at first the vaccine, uh, at first the virus, uh, um, the virus and the proteins are uh, retrieved, then the physical and property analysis of the proteins are conducted finally, uh, sorry, then the uh, epitope prediction are done where the T cell and B cell epitopes of the uh, viral proteins are um, predicted, then uh, we predicted or we selected the B cell and T cell epitopes according to some criteria like uh, high, an uh, high antigenicity, low allergenicity, or no anti allergenicity, then high conservancy or high conservancy, then non toxicity. And those epitopes that followed this criteria were considered as best selected epitopes or most promising epitopes. And then those epitopes were used in vaccine construction using different types of linkers and uh, adjuvants. And also, uh, the cytokine prediction ability of the MSA class 2 epitopes or HTL epitopes are also conducted. Then, um, after constructing the vaccine, vaccines, the antigenicity, allergenicity, and physiochemical property analysis of the vaccines are conducted. Finally, uh, then uh, we conducted the secondary tertiary structure prediction, refinement, validation, and disulfide engineering. Uh, then, the protein protein docking analysis was done between the vaccines and different types of toll like receptors. Then, the simulation studies. Uh, like molecular dynamic simulation and immune simulation was conducted. Finally, uh, the codon adaptation in silico cloning and analysis of the vaccine mRNA were performed. So here you can see the amino sequence of the three vaccine constructs and the three vaccine constructs differ from each other only in their adjuvant sequences they are depicted in the red color. Here, the first vaccine, V1, contains the uh, HABA protein as its adjuvant. Second vaccine contains the L12, L7 protein as its uh, as its adju adjuvant, and the third vaccine contains human beta defense entity as its uh, adjuvant sequence. Here you can see the three uh, dimensional structure of the three vaccine constructs. Here the docking between the toll like receptor. Uh, actually, in our study, uh, we have concluded that V3 vaccine construct or the best vaccine construct uh, according to the docking analysis. So, here you can see the docking between the toll like receptor here debated in or uh, colored in. Uh, the yellow color, and uh, here you can see the uh, toll like receptor A in variable color. And you can see that, that uh, the V3 uh, vaccine has interacted with the toll like receptor in its uh, protein binding group. So, uh, from this uh, docking analysis, we can conclude that uh, our vaccine protein V3 should have a capability to. Uh, stimulate the toll-like receptors. That is the molecular dynamic simulation, and the molecular dynamic simulation uh, from the molecular dynamic simulation study, uh, we concluded that our vaccine might have quite uh, good stability in biological environments. 
and here is the immune simulation uh, we have conducted the immune simulation uh, to i mean we have designed our vaccine uh, in such a way that we will need uh, three doses uh, which uh, which should be given in uh, 28 days interval from each other and these three doses of vaccines should be able to induce good immune response in the uh, recipient's body here you can see the after the three uh, vaccine administration the uh, antigen count has increased the b cell count also increased and the helper t cell count cytotoxic t cell population then the macrophage cell population and the cytokine level the cytokine level in plasma blood plasma has also increased so from this immune solution study we can also conclude that our vaccine v3 should have uh, quite good immune uh, immune stimulate immune stimulatory uh, function or immune stimulatory capability here is the in silico cloning study where the uh, when our base vaccine v3 I mean, the nucleotide sequence of the base vaccine V3 has been inserted into a plasmid, petite plasmid actually, and this uh, newly newly constructed recombinant uh, plasmid can be used for the mass production of our vaccine in E. coli strain K12. Uh, so, uh, in this study, uh, the epitope-based multivalent vaccines and multivalent vaccines are designed that might confer immunogenic protection against the four serotypes of dengue or dengue virus on two, three, four, and also the Zika viruses. And if satisfied results are achieved in the later um, in silico, uh, sorry, in vitro and in vivo studies, then these vaccines can be uh, used by the entire world to combat the infections of dengue virus and Zika virus. So here are the, some references, and thank you all.